Hello everyone, I'm Harry, welcome to my channel, and today we're going to do another How to Sound Like video. This time we're going to try and get the times on the Hellcat Spangles Sha La 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 by Arctic Monkeys. So before we get started, if you like this Sound Like video at any point, please leave a like, comment and subscribe, and hit the little bell notification for me as well. It really does help me out a lot, and that way you won't miss out on any of my future uploads. There's going to be affiliate links down in the description to every piece of gear I use in this video, and to record my videos. These do help support the channel out further, so I'd really appreciate if you go and check them out. So again, this is another one off the Suck It and See album, which is full of loads of really reverby and ambient guitar tones and some really cool tones throughout. I've actually done a couple off this album recently, but this one got requested a lot, so I thought this would be a really good one to do. And I have one pedal that really nails all those big reverb sounds. So I recently got sent the Mako series R1 by Walrus Audio, which is the second pedal in their Mako series. I actually did some demos and sound lights for the D1, which was like their multi-delay, and now this one's the multi-reverb. And as you can imagine, having all these different reverbs and tons of controls really helps me sculpt the tones and get close to the original song. I actually recently did a full demo of the R1 by Warus Audio, so if you'd like to see that, there'll be a link up in the cards in the description and pinned in the comments. So I should say I couldn't find a full multi-track for this, so I had to program the drums in, record the bass, and then record all the guitar parts, but hopefully we'll get the guitar parts close enough anyway. So the main other pieces of gear I'm using, the amp I'm using is my Hamstead Art is 60 Plus RT, which is one of my favourite clean pedal platform amps, that's running into the Tone King Iron Man 2 Attenuator, just to knock off a few dBs, and then the Celestian G12 M65 Creamback speakers being recorded by Lewitt MTP 440 Dynamic microphone which is like an SM57 with a tiny bit more bass. So we'll look at Alex's parts first. So he's pretty much just playing rhythm throughout. Apart from the choruses there's this one little like fuzzy overdub but we'll look at the chords first. So I'm using my 1965 American Vintage Reissue Jazzmaster. So to give us a really slight overdrive I'm actually using the Greer Amps Lightspeed. This is just to give us a tiny bit of crunch. It's still pretty clean though. And then obviously for the reverb parts I'm using the R1 by Walrus Audio. So I went into the spring mode on this and actually dialed in a little bit of modulation on the reverb as well. So that really gives us that kind of spacey sound that we hear on the original. And the mix fairly high, not really high, but it's definitely noticeable. So if I show you what the Jazzmaster sounds like going straight into the amp, then I'll kick on the light speed, and then I'll kick on the Mako Series R1 with the spring reverb with slight modulation, so you can see what each pedal is doing to our bass tone. So the Jazzmaster straight into the amp sounds like this. <laughs> So there you go, you can see what each pedal is doing to our bass time. The light speed just giving us a tiny bit of grit, and then the R1 giving us that lovely wet spring reverb with a little bit of modulation just to give it a bit of movement and the spacey sound that we hear on the original track. So I'll pull that track isolated from the intro song now. You'll see the settings of the R1 reverb on screen, and just bearing in mind we're using the light speed with a tiny bit of grit. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
Okay, so there's one other part. In the chorus parts where there's the chords, there's Jamie's lead part that we're going to look at, but there's also this little fuzzy part that comes in as well. For that, I had exactly the same settings on the light speed and the R1 reverb, and then I just engaged the fuzz ranges by forming the B pedals to give us that nice little fuzz tone. It's kind of like a fuzz face style pedal that's running into the light speed and then into the reverb. So I'll show you what it sounds like with just the light speed and the reverb first, and then I'll kick on the fuzz. <laughs> So there you go, you can hear the difference that the fuzz is doing to that tone. So I'll pull that track isolated from the intro song, just bearing in mind we have the fuzz ranges engaged with settings like this, running into the light speed and then into the R1, giving us the spring reverb tone. You'll see the settings of the R1 on screen anyway. <laughs> Okay, so now we'll look at Jamie's parts. So I'm using my 959 reissue ESU V5 in Monty's Light Output PF humbucking pickups. To give us that really slight overdrive, I'm actually using the brown amplification protein. That's the blues breaker side with settings like this. Then that's running into the Mako series D1, also by Warris Audio, which is giving us like a nice dotted eighth delay. And then into the R1. This time on the R1, I had a plate reverb with quite a high mix. So it's quite washy, just like the original track. And then for when we get to that double stop bend in the chorus, I'm just engaging the fuzz ranges again. And that's running into the protein just to give us that big sound. But everything else is just the protein into the D1 and then into the R1. So I'll show you what the guitar sounds like going straight clean into the amp. Then I'll engage with the protein, then the D1 delay, then the reverb and then the fuzz ranges for that big double stop bend. So the guitar straight into the amp sounds like this. So there you go, you can hear what each pedal is doing to our tones. We had the protein for the slight overdrive, then running into the Mako D1 for that dotted eighth delay, and then into the R1 with the plate reverb with quite a high mix. And then of course, I'm engaging the fuzz ranges just for that double stop bend in the chorus. So I'll pull that track isolated from the intro song now. Just bear in mind, we have the protein for the slight overdrive, the D1 for that dotted eighth delay, then the R1, which you'll see on screen anyway, the settings, and then just bearing in mind on that double stop bend in the chorus parts, I'm engaging the fuzz ranges. So that track isolated from the intro song sounds like this.
So there we have it. That was a look at how to sound like the Arctic Monkeys on the Hellcat Spangles Sha La La La. A really cool one from their album. This album is full of loads of really interesting, kind of ambient e guitar signs. This was a really fun one to nail. Of course, having the proteins give us that slight bit of grit on the 335, and the light speeds give me a slight bit of grit on the Jazzmaster really came in handy. Then, of course, the Fuzz Rangers for both chorus parts on the Jazzmaster and the ESV35 just leave us that big wall of sounds. Then the Make ID one adds in a little dotted eight for, for Jamie's parts, and then the Warrus Audio R1 being the saving grace for this leave us that nice spring reverb with modulation for the Jazzmaster parts, and that big washy plate reverb for Jamie's parts really came in handy. The Mako series is really fantastic in my opinion. The D1 quickly became one of my favorite delay pedals, and now the R1 has quickly become one of my favorite reverb pedals as well. It really handles so much territory, and it's really, really tweakable, so you can get pretty much any reverb sound you like out of it. Again, if you want to see my full demo of the R1 by Warrus Audio, there'll be a link up in the cards in the description and pinned in the comments. Let me know down in the comments how close you thought I got to the original song and any future chat sound like videos you'd like to see me do. Again, there's going to be affiliate links down in the description to every piece of gear I use in this video and to record my videos. These do help support the channel out further, so I'd really appreciate it. Go and check them out. If you did like this sound like video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and hit the little bell notification for me as well. It really does help me out a lot, and that way you won't miss out on any of my future uploads. Other than that, go onto my channel, check out some of my playlists, I have plenty more lessons, covers, gear demos, how to sound like videos, and anything guitar related. As always, I've been Harry, and thanks for watching.